Normally, I refrain from glorifying the acts of a criminal, but when I researched Jack Shepard and found out that he once escaped from prison with his inhumanly busty wife in tow, I decided to make an exception because it's a funny story and because I can. So who was Jack Shepard? Well, according to every source I consulted, up until about the age of 20, he was a fucking nobody. He was actually planning to become a carpenter until he realised that he could make more money being a criminal. So in about 1722, he began an illicit affair with a prostitute known only as Bess, later marrying her when she became his wife, and basically just started robbing the shit out of every house in London. So over the course of the next few years, Jack, with Bess in tow, robbed hundreds of homes across London and escaped from jail no less than four times. Escaped from four of London's toughest prisons already. Everyone wants to meet me. Even the king himself has got an artist to draw my picture. <laughs> However, his luck eventually ran out in 1724. But the police finally caught up with him, arrested him, threw him in jail, and then hung him for good measure. So he died. So I'm presuming that's what he's still doing now. He had a fucking good run though, didn't he? Two years, not bad. Trapped <laughs> hung him because he was like, he's gonna get out of jail. Yeah, it's not, get out of this one. <laughs> he was so well known in London for his many, many escapes. People followed him to the gallows, hoping that he was gonna make a like, miraculous escape at the last minute, because he'd done it before. <laughs> I kind of feel sorry for the kids that went there thinking, oh yay, handsome Jack, he's going to escape again. And just watching him walk up to the gallows like, come on Jack, where is he? Has he got, has he got a horse? Is someone going to rescue him? Oh, he's getting his last rites from the priest. Oh, he's, he's going to make it dramatic, last second finish. Oh, he's, he's, he's still fighting the rope. I'm sure he's got a, oh, oh, oh no. So, yeah. That's kind of depressing. So let's talk about one of the escapes that he actually made from prison. So was he arrested for that time? Well, he was arrested for pickpocketing. He was caught and thrown into one of London's many prisons. And while he was there, his wife dutifully visited him and the authorities recognised her and threw him in the same cell together. Luckily for Jack though, his wife Bess just so happened to be in possession of the largest set of breasts in London. So why was that useful? Well, Bess's more than ample cleavage actually came in very useful when an associate of Jack's came in and handed through the bars a file, a chisel, two drills and a knife, which Bess was able to hide inside of her cleavage. What? Yes, but it gets better than that because while this, all this was happening and the guy was sliding all this shit through the bars for Bess to shove down her top, Jack was distracting the guard who for some reason wasn't completely entranced and amazed by a set of breasts so large they could hide the contents of a fucking toolbox in them. How big does a pair of breasts have to be to hide a knife, two drills, a chisel, and a vial? But hide them enough where a guard will walk past and there's a fucking drill in there. It's like, people get suspicious <laughs> when they see an, a badly made cake with a file in it. How massive are these breasts? These world destroying breasts. Those are the biggest hookers I have ever seen. <laughs> so when night fell, Jack took the tools and began using them to remove the bars from his cell window. He then took the knife and began cutting Bess's clothes into small strips, which he then used to create a crude rope along with his bed sheets. So what Jack had to do is, bear in mind, he stripped off half of her clothes for this well, so he then had to lower the half naked woman with heaving breasts out of his cell window, which would have been trouble for like a normal fit man, but Jack was known for being very slight. He was, I think he was about five foot four and didn't weigh more than a hundred pound wet through, which is how he escaped so many times he could slip through the bars and things like that. Why don't you just leave her behind? No, let's be serious here, mate. Would you leave that much woman behind? Okay, carry on. <laughs> I can escape from prison, but then I'm leaving behind the breasts of holding. <laughs> I'm not leaving that fucker behind. It took me a long time to get all that in there. <laughs> a bit. And then the problem was he must have turned and then let out a god almighty sigh when he saw that between him, Bess and Freedom was a 20 foot high wall. So he climbed the wall, lowered the rope, pulled Bess all the way up again and then lowered her down and let her climb all the way down. And then he stripped off his clothes, threw him into the prison yard and jumped down. And then they ran off to Freedom. So running away from this prison was a half naked woman with heaving breasts. And a, and a naked, naked man. man, yes. So we've established that Bess had pretty massive boobs, right? I think you have established Yeah. But here's what makes it hilarious. When the police came in the next day and saw that Jack's cell was empty, they initially couldn't believe that he'd escaped through the window because they could not believe how a woman with breasts that massive could have squeezed through the window. 
And when the newspapers heard about it and they realised, oh my God, woman, giant breasts, naked man, running away from prison, that shit was on the front page. <laughs> and Jack became a, like, a hero in the process because you kind of get to be a hero to the masses when you escape from prison with a giant busty woman in tow, completely stark, wallet naked. How can this not be a carry-on film? This is the perfect... Jack Shepard, he's... It's literally a carry-on film. It is. Jack Shepard, he's fairly famous, but from my research, he's not all that talked about. <laughs> he's fucking brilliant. As much as I would like to make a joke about the media of the time glorifying what was essentially a bad man escaping from prison, I can't help but imagine if this happened in the modern day, BuzzFeed would talk about that shit for weeks. Don't we need to do like, comment, subscribe? Yes, we do. And I thank you for remembering for one. If you enjoyed that video and the content we're putting out, why not like, comment, or subscribe, or perhaps ring the bell. Or ring my bell. Ooh. Since we've spent so long talking about a part of the female anatomy, I feel like penises need to get their look in. So have I told you about the cock of friendship? The cock of friendship? The cock of friendship. When I was in, I think it was third year, I used to live in a house, if you might, you might have come over once, about 10 people. Do you remember I had that big 10 bedroom house that had two kitchens and yeah. it had an entire room full of fridges. It was fucking weird. While we were there, we had a guy come over and paint one of our walls. But because our kitchen was in a basement, he had this weird black paint that he was putting on the walls and it dried white, but it was black. So, you know, he painted it. He only put it on the very bottom bit, stopped damp and mildew. And I walked into the house once, drunk as I normally was back then. And I just got my beer out and I walked in I just saw all this wet black paint on this white wall. Oh, there's a note. This is drying, it will dry white, don't worry. Oh, okay. <gasps> so I've opened the paint can. It's going to dry white anyway. Dip my paintbrush in. Just draw a massive three foot long cock on the wall in stitches. <laughs> think it's, I think it's the funniest thing I have ever fucking done. And then I go and sit down and just admire my work from the kitchen table. And one of my housemates comes in, I forget which, and they just sort of, for fuck's sake, Carl, that's not going to go away. Went, no, it's going to dry white, it's fine. The next day, I've forgotten all about the cock. I go straight to university. I come in, and it's all dried white. And all the paint's going, oh, builder must have come in and fixed it, that's no problem. I'll get a beer. Go on over my fridge, and there's a big plaster cock and balls in my fridge, and I just fucking lose it, mate. <laughs> the builder has found it so funny that he'd used all of his spare plaster to create <laughs> an, an, an anatomically correct penis and balls that he then put in my fridge for me to find. But anyway, we had five fridges. So we had to ask one of my housemates which fridge was mine. Hey, excuse me, I've got a gift for Carl. <laughs> so, because we had five fridges and there was ten of us, so everyone got a fridge each, shows someone else. So I opened up my fridge and there's just a big plaster cock staring back at me. And I fucking lose it. And I go straight down, I pull it out, and I'm running around the house with it. Hey, look at this, I've got a cock! Did the builder leave this? And my housemate says, yeah. And he's like, it is the cock of friendship. It establishes that we are friends. And we use it as a doorstop for the next three years. It's pretty great.